Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex and in today's video, I'm bringing you guys the best Hu Tao build that you can get. Yeah, we're going to be going over everything, artifacts, uh, team comps, just basically how to play her and how her whole kit works and everything. So stay tuned, we're going to get into everything. This funeral parlor director is absolutely crazy and she's probably the most broken character inside of the game. For instance, my... My Hu Tao, I've only built her for a couple days now, and she can already, like, one-shot bosses. So, we don't have a complete showcase because we don't have her ascended all the way up, and her weapon's not ascended all the way up either. But once we get those up, she's gonna be ridiculous. So, I cannot wait to give you guys uh, this build. So, we're gonna go ahead and start off. As you can see, we have about 30k HP, which is decent so we have 124 elemental mastery and i'll show you why in a minute uh 1600 attack so for crit rate we have 59.8 percent crit rate and 233.9 percent crit damage which is absolutely insane we have a 94.6 percent pyro damage bonus this would be 61 but do keep in mind that once her hp is below 50 percent it does get a buff so this is inflated a little bit but not really because if you keep her at if you keep her below 50 percent hp uh, all the time, then you'll always have this, which is really, really nice. Her energy recharge is at 120%, so it's okay. It's not the best either. For weapons, we're using Staff of Homo. I was lucky enough to pull it. Um, all of you free-to-play players, you guys can use something like Prototype Star Glitter if you're completely free-to-play. Um, I know, you know, not everybody has this. Dragon Spain is like a little bit more free-to-play friendly. It's pretty good on her. It's not the best, but it's pretty good. Um, and I don't have the Lithic Spear, but that one's pretty good. Um, and yeah, it does, like, depend on your party members, whether the Lithic, the Lithic Spear is good or not. Her best, like, um, support is Shin Chu, and he is a leeway character, so you're already gonna get him. And then we'll, we'll get into that later, but that's, that's just a bonus that you can get up straight off the bat. So I think the Lithic Spear is probably one of the better options if you're free to play. For her artifacts, now, you can, the, the best artifact set for her is the four-piece crimson witch which i do have but i lose a lot of crit damage and a lot of crit rate for that and i don't think that it's worth it obviously the four piece set of crimson witch flames is the best artifact set for her but if not you can use wanderer's troop now a lot of people are kind of eh about wanderer's troop but if you have a good set like i do like a good uh, two piece set to go along with the crimson witch it's actually pretty good because she relies heavily on elemental mastery which again we'll get into later um for her you know big heavy uh attacks so, starting off the flower, we have HP, crit damage, crit rate, and attack, which isn't, which is pretty good that we, that we roll that much crit damage on it, and some crit rate. That's always nice. For this one, this is our off piece because this is probably the best piece that I have, like the best feather that I have in general. So we just threw this on her because we're not using Kaching main anymore. So we swapped, and this is just giving her a bunch of crit rate and a bunch of crit damage, which is really nice, and it gives her a little bit of elemental mastery. So this is a really good feather for her, um, even though it's not, you know, it's a little bit offset, but it doesn't really matter because a three-piece set's not going to do crap anyways. For this, we are using Conqueror's Final Hourglass, and for this one, you're going to want HP. Um, for the Sands, you definitely want HP, and um, the reason for that is because her E, which we'll get into later, scales off of her HP. So when you go into your when you go into your E, it goes bases off your max HP, and the higher your max HP is, the better it's going to be. Um, so, HP, 46.6%, very nice. We rolled some crit rate and a lot of crit damage, which is very, very nice. Um, some energy recharge, this is where we got the extra 20% from earlier. And 209 um, extra HP, which is also really nice because she scales off of uh, HP. So it's no longer like a, a nuisance because before, you know, you roll and you're like, HP sucks, forget it. HP now is actually really good on her. So now you can roll so many extra things. This one, really good as well. Pyro damage bonus, HP. Elements Mastery, HP, and Crit Damage. These are all really good for her, um, for Pirate Damage Bonus. Thankfully, I already had some of these artifacts up from Deluxe, so I was just able to throw them on her. Either way, still really good artifacts. Uh, nonetheless, they're not the best. I still have some work to do, but they're they're definitely doable. Right here, we have 31.1% um, Crit Rate. We have HP, HP, and Crit Damage, which is ridiculous, because I think I rolled Crit Damage like either three, three out of four times or something like that, which is really nice. So really really good artifacts um that are doable so we have about 60 percent crit rate 233 percent crit damage not bad at all constellation c0 she's really free to play friendly she's cracked no matter what but if you did wish for c1 then even better because that's really broken with her 
For her talents, I recommend getting these two up as high as possible. Since I don't have her ascended, I can't level these up anymore. Um, but I do have them all maxed out for her ascension. So they're all level 8. I recommend doing these two first. Um, I did. I think I did my normal attack first and then this. And then worry about uh, Spirit Soother last because you're obviously going to be using her for her E most of the time. Um, so these are all really, really good. So the, her E, basically what it does is you pop it, right? Increases Hu Tao's attack based on her max HP at the time of entering the state. Attack bonus gained cannot exceed 400%. That's why I was saying I think about uh, I think about um like basically f like 45k HP is like her cap for this, which I don't think anybody's gonna really gonna have unless they have perfect artifacts or something. Um, and it converts her attacks to cryo damage. Charge attacks uh, apply the blood blossom effect, which is pretty nice because. Um, you can swap, you know, you can swap to her and right before she gets off of her E, you can do a charge attack and they'll continue to take power damage over the next few seconds, which is really nice. Um, oh, and it increases her uh, interruption. I mean, her resistance to interruptions which is also really nice. Yeah, Blood Blossom, take power damage every four seconds, which is really, really nice. Um, and I have seen it do pretty decent damage, like 5k a hit, which is pretty not, uh, it's, it's not bad at all. For Spirit Soother, this one's a little bit different too. So if we take a look at it. Commands a Blazing Spirit to attack, dealing pyro damage as a large AoE, which is pretty crazy. This is a heavy hitting E, man. I mean, if you can get a good elemental reaction, you can one tap people with it. I, I've done it before, and not one tap people. I mean, just enemies in general, but bosses as well, if you can build her properly. Once striking the enemy, regenerates a percentage of Hu Tao's max HP. This effect can be triggered up to five times. Uh, so basically, if you hit five enemies, you know, it'll heal, heal you based off her max HP, which go by this. So her. HP skill damage, so when you have her low HP, she'll do 558% damage, skill HP regeneration, 9.23% max HP. So you definitely want to be below 50% HP and have your E out when you pop this. Parmita Papilio State, um, activated by a guide to add by ends. All allies in the party, excluding Hu Tao, will get an increased crit rate. So when she's off her E, when you swap to other party members, they're going to have increased crit rate, which is really nice. I mean, uh, support, you don't really have to worry about it, but it's still nice either way. Sangwing Rose. Um, when Hu Tao's HP is equal or less than 50%, power damage by 33%. That's why you're seeing my, you know, my power damage go up a little bit. When Hu Tao cooks the dish perfectly, she has 18% chance of receiving an additional suspicious type dish. Which is pretty cool because she can do that on just about any dish, I believe. So we're running for her party is, we're running Hu Tao, obviously, and Ching Chu. These two are the main two that you're going to be running together. They're absolutely ridiculous. Bennett and Shang Yun. Now, I'll go. I'll go through these one at a time. Xing Chu and Hu Tao. Obviously, you're going to be getting a lot of vaporize, which is one. The damage multiplier for that is 1.50x. Uh, I believe. I believe it's 1.50x, um, which is crazy. So, the damage multiplier for these two together, which is vaporize, is going to be 1.50x, which is crazy. Whereas melt, which would be cryo and pyro, would be two two times the damage, basically. So I use him for like her E, or yeah, I mean for her Q, I use him for her Q because you can really stack up those big boy numbers and not to mention these two together, you can get freeze a lot and you get a lot more leniency with enemies. You don't have to worry about dodging other attacks. You can basically freeze them and then come with her and then do like a really insane charge attack and just deal a bunch of damage. Um, and I also like how she doesn't affect pyro on the enemies when you pop her E. It's only after you swing. So you don't have to worry about, you know, ruining like a... A DPS showcase by accidentally activating E, which is crazy. Bennett's controversial. A lot of people don't like running him because they're like, oh, Hu Tao can run her, can run, uh, you know, can heal herself, and you also get the healing from Ching Chu's swords. Um, but that's not the end of the world. Um, so yes, it's true. But Bennett's kind of like my backup. You don't obviously don't have to use him. This is just uh, I prefer to have him just in case. I like to play a little bit safe. So in case any of my support units get low HP or Hu Tower herself just gets really really low, like too too low for comfort. Basically, we have Bennett in there also to get to give her the elemental renaissance. If you want to get this with another character, I would recommend going with Shang Ling if you have her constellation up. I was using her for a while because while her Q is active, if you have her C C uh, six. Uh, I believe, then you will get an increased power damage bonus of, I believe, 40%, which is crazy. Um, so, she's really nice with her. Um, if you wanted to use somebody like Fischl for Overload, you could always do that. Um, there's really, th th there's so many options you could use. Um, you can use somebody like Beto and use her Q, because I know that's really strong. I'm not a big fan of Beto, but um, you can always use somebody like that. So, this is the party that I'm rocking with, and 
the, now uh, the way you use her is kind of um, it's kind of different from anybody else because you do have to keep in mind her HP. Basically, what I would normally do, um, just in general, if you have Xing Chu's Q up, definitely use his Q, and then you swap to her and you just use her E, and you'll be able to see the damage um, on screen. She hits insane, and that's even without any food. It's she's just ridiculous, man. She's absolutely insane. So Vaporize is probably her best bet because Xing Chu can apply it so efficiently and he can do so much. Like you get so much value out of Xing Chu just on your team in general. Here's how here's how I usually do it. Um Bennett Bennett doesn't really play a huge role. He's kinda just in here for the cycle. So usually what I would do is I will come up, pop his E. If you're using sacrificial sword, you can pop his E again. I would swap to Chong Young, pop his E. Pop his Q if you have it, it's not necessary. And then if you have Xing Chu's Q, obviously you're gonna pop that. And then if you have her Q, you can pop that. If you don't, it's not really the end of the deal. That's not really a big deal, but you will be able to get extra damage off of Cryo. That wasn't a crit. If it was, I probably would have one-tapped her. But that's just basically this uh, rotation for this specific build. Like I said, Ben is just here for backup. Um, I don't really use him that much, which probably isn't the smartest idea. I should probably throw in... Uh, uh, what's her name? Frick. Uh, Shin Shang Ling. I should probably throw in Shang Ling instead of him. But I kind of just like the safety of having him, uh, and he does give her some extra damage or attack based on, uh, you know, the the 25% attack bonus, which is also really nice. Um, but you can always throw in Shang Ling, which is probably who I'd rather recommend, uh, especially if you have a, a stronger Huta build. And she can basically heal herself, and especially with Xing, Xing Chu, she can do a lot of freaking healing, which is crazy. But... Um, you definitely want to keep her E up 100% of the time, especially if her as a main DPS. So while her E is off, so let's take a look, right? So you use her E, blah, blah, blah. Well, you pop Shing Chu's E, and then you use her E, right? And then once you're off of her E, you'll have like five, five about five or six seconds left after, off of her E. You can swap to Shing Chu. If you have his E, you could use that. But he does have a pretty big cooldown off of his E. So if you don't have that, you can swap to Bennett, pop his E. Pop his Q if you want to. Um, if this is Chong Ling, you would obviously pop her E instead because that you might be able to get more value out of that. But then I'll swap to Chong Young, pop his E. Um, and because he's running sacrificial and his E's not like super, you know, beneficial to this build, if um because his E has a well, he has a pretty low cooldown rate on his E. But uh like generally speaking, but um usually I mean when you go up against enemies, right? You pop his E. And especially since I have this thing uh, where I have an 80% chance to end its own cooldown, which is crazy. Um, instead of popping his E twice, because um, we don't really need that much energy, I'll swap to her right after I pop his E, right? And then what I'll do is, and I come back through to him, he, I don't have to worry about, you know, him coming back to his E and I can just swap right back to her. Or so back, right back to Shing Chu. Wow. And I do think Freeze is really nice uh, just to have. It's really fun to play with especially in this build because then enemies will just be staying still and you can just pop her Q and deal insane amounts of damage. Um, so, oh, I did not... That's okay. This is why I have been in the team, everybody. If you want to try this team out, that's definitely really, really cool. I would recommend it. It's really fun. And, um, yeah, I, I'll throw some showcases here at the end of the video. But um, that is going to be about all for the builds. If you guys did enjoy watching this, um, please let me know by either liking or subscribing or both. Or uh, just give me any kind of feedback in the comments of what I can improve on or what I need, you know, about what I'm doing well. I just want to put out content that you guys enjoy, honestly. So um, that's going to be about it for today's video. Enjoy these, uh, these, this uh, showcase right here at the end of the video. And until next time, guys, uh, peace out.